question. We're going to see him draft. He finished 9-0 and yesterday with a pretty good black-red deck. He was surprised himself that he got there. Let's see what his pack is going to be. There's Arena Athlete, Fiery Temper, cards that he had in his deck last time around. There's the Fate Feathers that he likes, Unholy Hunger, Sovereigns of Lost Lore, and Verdant Re Rebirth. Lots of good stuff in there. Um, yeah, this was actually the, the pack where uh, Arne Hushenbet got the, the fifth pick Fate Feathers, and now we understand why. Um, <laughs> as for the best common, I think it's uh, Fiery Temper. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, you have to wonder whether the gold cards, specifically the Vengeful Rebirth and the Sovereigns of Lost Alara in particular, wouldn't just be better. It is more of a color commitment, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the power level is, uh, is through the roof. Um, you know, uh, as a six mana big creature with Exalted, that's already fine. But uh, if you have uh, good Auras, could be like uh, Umbras or, if all goes well, Eldrazi Conscription, that's yep. uh, common we even saw in Constructed. Uh, this uh, card can win the game pretty much by itself. Mm -hmm. So, uh, a bit more of a color commitment. Uh, there we have the Eldrazi Conscription. That is the dream, uh, if you can find it. But Mammoth's Umbra exactly. is... Uh, I mean, it's not quite Eldrazi Conscription, but uh, would, be, would be a plan. Yeah, I found there's also high number of puts the Thermal Alchemist to the front as well, but I'm imagining Mammoth Umbra with uh, the Sovereigns of Lost Alara. That, that creates a very big creature mm -hmm. that is very hard to deal with. Uh, Thermal Alchemist is uh, perhaps actually the, the best card in the booster, in the abstract, mm -hmm. right? If this were first pick, first pack. It just doesn't go with his first pick at all. Yeah. So, yeah, at this point he has to make a choice. Do I just go for power or do I go for the card that uh, fits better with my, uh, with my first pick? Yeah, Circular Logic is also pulled to the front. He goes for the Mammoth Number, so goes f already c uh, has the synergy, right? Uh, either card is powerful, decently powerful, but together they're great. Yep. I like it. Uh, this uh, well, it's a deck with a plan at the moment. Uh, now he's just hoping for uh, some heroic creatures, as well as uh, you know other ways to uh, target your own creatures. All right, there's a Stitch Drake, Rhino Unicorn, Souls Fire. But I'm sure he likes Terramorphic Expanse, Slippery Bogle. <laughs> Why uh, not? Uh, You're going for Auras. Might as well go with the Bogle. Honestly, I do feel this card is a bit overrated <laughs> for the current format. Even though Slippery Bogle has seen play in modern in Hexproof decks, you do need a lot, and I mean a lot of Auras to really make it, uh, it worth it. Uh, I would be leaning towards Terramorphic Expanse, actually, just yeah. to fix my mana. Yeah. Um, but uh, we'll see where, where Mark uh, goes. Ooh, he went for Ronum Unicorn, pick three. He's really sticking to his guns here. I'm surprised. I, I would think that players would be like to dabble a little bit here on other colors or potential powerful card. He stared a long time at that Soul's Fire. Uh, yeah, but I think at this point the, the red ship has, uh, has sailed. Uh, he's been passing so many red cards and it doesn't really go with the, the cards he has been drafting so far. Sky Spear Cavalry, on the other hand, uh, it's, uh, it's, it doesn't actually have heroic uh, written onto it. But uh, it uh, likes to pick up enchantments that boost its power, perhaps even more than heroic creatures. Just imagine a Mammoth Umbra on this, and yeah. you're, you're swinging for 10 in the air. Yeah, for um, 12 if you have the Sovereigns. <laughs> yes. So I like the Cavalry here. Oh, for here. sure. It uh, fits perfectly well with the cards he has drafted uh, so far. Um, yeah, this is a deck uh, with a plan. Yeah, I'm still... I'm not sure like how it's coming through. It seems like the cards he's picking up relatively early are somewhat of a, low, a lower power. Oh, that's a late Kodama's mm -hmm. Reach. Wow, and a Prismatic Lens as well. And that is Sky Spear Cavalry in the pack mm -hmm. too. And uh, yeah, so now he has to make a choice. Kodama's Reach uh, by mm -hmm. itself is very, uh, is very powerful. Uh, it can also ramp into Sovereigns of Lost Alara, fix your mana. Green is also a heroic color. If you mm -hmm. want to stick in blue-white, you can pick up the Sky, Skill, Sky Spear Cavalry. Uh, if you're okay with splashing black and want to make the Sovereigns even better, Mark of the Vampire is an mm -hmm. option. Go uh, for the cavalry. Yeah, consistency uh, being, uh, being the name of, uh, of the game here. Yeah, really sticking to his guns here. Not uh, veering away from, uh, from the blue-white cards he started but to pick up there. But now he does have to pick up uh, cheaper uh, cards because mm -hmm. his deck is just filled with five and six mana cards at this point. Yeah. He needs to mind the, the early part of his mana curve. Yeah, there's uh, Il Umbro. I, I don't think he's too keen on picking that one up. The Archeomancer and Repel the Darkness in his colors, but he's probably eyeing the Wicker Bow Elder. He could still pivot towards green, yeah. uh, green white because he only has one blue card in Sovereigns. Mm -hmm. So he did pick up the Wicker Bow Elder. Green, white, splash, blue. Uh, sure. That, 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 yeah. that could easily work. And there are multiple heroic creatures in uh, in green as well as great enchantments. So yeah, we saw but, uh, actually Arne open up a, a Celestial Colonnade, I, I believe. 
But uh, we haven't seen it, so I assume someone has already picked it up earlier. There's a turn to mist. Uh, that is uh, not the card you want to target your <laughs> heroic creatures with, but uh, um, it is a relevant interactive uh, spell. Mm -hmm. you, I guess you could pick up uh, like Hooding Mandrills or maybe the Walker a lot and then uh, like try to find another turn to mist for the, the Wombo Combo. But, uh, but no, is it, it is the turn to mist. Again, sticking to his guns. Not not being away. There's another Wickabo Elgar Bronskate. The hero of Lena Tower. This is late. This is a clear signal to me. That's pick eight? Uh it is pick eight, uh wow. indeed. Uh, I mean, that yeah. was that was a really good pack too, right? Remember it was the pack with the Fiend Hunter that we saw Arna yep. pick up. So great pickup for uh, for right. Mark to be as here. Green, white, heroic, splashing blue for the sovereigns, uh, it is, I would say. Because mm -hmm. yeah, the well I mean the the hero, if you have a couple ways to uh, to target it, can get out of hand pretty uh, pretty quickly. Yeah, it was one of the best rares in, uh, when it first came out, and in Theros, I believe, mm -hmm. or the following set. Uh, there's another Wicker Bow Elder for for Mark. Again, decent pickup, and uh, Hero of Lena Tower downshifted to uncommon here, and uh, it can still lead to some very big blow, especially if you have something like a God's Willing or a Hyena Umbra, just those cheap effects where you can then fully take advantage of the. Of uh, its ability. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, Teague. Um, <laughs> uh, not a combo with Mammoth Umbra. Yeah, it, it does prevent you from casting the Umbra, but it might also prevent the opponent from mm -hmm. casting some powerful spells. Yeah, double uh, Cleave is a good trick. Not where you want to be, but with the Hero of Lena Tower, uh, an unblocked one, it can certainly do do powerful things. That could work. Uh, the Bogle uh, made its way around. Uh, fine, you can pick it up uh, here. <laughs> now, you yeah. You still don't have many ways to uh, boost your own creatures. Uh, mm -hmm. Like uh, Mammoth Umbra is, I believe, the the only thing he has uh, picked up yep. so far. And then, well, Hexproof doesn't really uh, help as much. Yeah, quite a late Archeomancer. No one seems to want to pick those up. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, but it doesn't doesn't really fit his yeah. uh, his deck. Uh, none of these cards do. Yep. Just hate drafting a Grave Scrabbler there. Yeah, off with the uh, Mark well, of Sands, Mark the Vampire, sh maybe in some world he, w he w would play yep. it. Yep, uh, it uh, would be on uh, like the, the second splash, but uh, <laughs> who knows? Maybe I should have picked up those Kodama's Reaches. Well, I like Repel the Darkness, it's actually decent with heroic creatures. Yeah, you can target your own creatures, uh, exactly. indeed. It's uh, not how the card was intended, I guess, but uh, well, it'll do in a pinch. And a bridge from below last pick, I think. Yeah, a rare, this late. No. Yeah. Color me surprised. All right, so interesting uh, development here. So uh, Mark Tobias heavily in white at the, at the beginning of the draft, and then uh, dipped his toes into into green once the hero of Lane and Tower came around. Still can splash the sovereigns of Lost Alar, which I think mm -hmm. it's it's worth in a green white deck. Would you agree? Uh, yes, so the the power level is just uh, through the roof on that uh, on that card. Um, yeah, on the whole, it does it doesn't really look as great uh, to me. Right, you have uh, almost no early drops. Uh, there's just a Ronom unicorn and a, and a hero of uh, of Lena Tower. And the Bogle, maybe. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I guess I it, it qualifies as an early drop, but uh, <laughs> it doesn't really do much without some uh, some help. And the the curve is super top uh, top heavy, mm -hmm. uh, and there are not as many ways to uh, target uh, your own creatures. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, yeah, without ways to boost uh, their power, cards like uh, Hero of Lena Tower and the Sky Spill Cavalry are just medium. Um, yeah, what I would be hoping for is yeah some some good early creatures as well as uh, some good ways to uh, boost the power of your own uh, creatures or just target them to trigger heroic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean the, the, he could still pick up quite a few cards. Uh, there are plenty of Umbras in the format. So uh, in uh, in green or white, mm. so I, I think he's still fine in that regard. He could also uh, find something like Helios Pilgrim, maybe yep. even splash like the f uh, Flight of Fancy as well. Uh, even though with Sky Spear Cavalry in your deck, you probably want something that boosts power mm -hmm. uh, first and foremost. But again, it's a it's a possible pickup. So I think his deck's not bad. At least it has a cl very clear identity and. Uh, it's fairly straightforward, you know, he, it's not a train wreck so far. He's not like looking for this one card to make his deck work, but you no. know, he can just pick up any of a, of a bunch of commas that will be available to him. No, and, and I think he knows what his deck is trying to, uh, to accomplish, so you can draft around that at this point. And there's a God's Willing, a great heroic enabler. 
Stone Charred Warrior, Angel of Despair, Range Assistance, Spider Spawning, <laughs> Balefire Dragon. Uh, uh oh, Murder's Red Cap. Oof. That's a good pack. That is a good pack, but there are not many good cards uh, for him. Yep. Uh, like all those uh, red cards, yeah, that would require another color entirely. I don't think he, uh, he really wants to pivot into that. Mm -hmm. Staunch Hearted Warrior uh, would be good um, and, and might be the pickup, though he doesn't have many ways to target his own creatures yet. God's Willing uh, <laughs> is, uh, is the, the pickup uh, here. It is great with Hero of Lena Tower. Also allows you to, uh, say, protect your uh, Sufferance of Lost uh, Alara sure. from a removal spell. And the Sky One also helps with uh, like finding the right mix of cards. Mm -hmm. It is actually one of the better comments for this uh, for this archetype. All right, so Spider Umbro, Honoring Champion, Umburial Rights. Another turn to miss. The yeah. uh, pretty empty pack again there for for Mark Tobias. I mean. He might want to pick up the Umbra, but look, looking at Wandering Champion, maybe as he, as you indicated, he need, he's maybe looking at a way to lower his curve. Yes, uh, he, I mean you, you do need some early drops, uh, especially in a deck filled with uh, a bunch of ways to target your own creatures. Uh, and the Spider Umbra, while fine, uh, is maybe not as important as making sure that you have some uh, some early part of the curve. So just a three one for for two mana. The ability is unlikely to uh, <laughs> really come into play. But hey, you do need uh, to cast something in the early game. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, not probably not too happy about how these first few packs have been going. You really want to open up, you know, like powerful packs so that you can have something for you. Wing Seed Rider, well, though. That, that is a good one. Yeah, that's great pickup. That's exactly what he wants. Yep. Yeah, the rest of the pack is okay as well. Like Easy pick. High Priest, Reviving Vapor Skies Recovery. Potentially, he could play those, but Wing Seed Rider is the premier common for a heroic deck. Absolutely, one of the well, better commons in general and it's just such a great fit for uh, for what this deck is trying to accomplish as well as locking up that uh, that early part of the curve. He was looking for three drops. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, it ticks all the boxes so this is uh, precisely the card that he was hoping for. And if you just put a Mammoth on Brown to this you have a 6-6 six, six, uh, Flying mm. Vigilance. The stuff of dreams. With totem armor protection, it's it's pretty difficult to deal with that. Uh, I can tell you that much. Yep. All right, another pack. Mammotigen. Wow. Uh, still in a pack. Mammoth Umbra. Another yep. one. Oof. He's probably happy to pick that one. Even though again, it's it's pretty slow, but it's good with the, those Sky Spear Cavalries. It's good with the Wing Seed Rider. Yep. I think he's gonna be happy about picking up another Mammoth Umbra. I agree completely. Um, yeah, at least now he has double Sky Spear Cavalry, double Mammoth Umbra, so you can assemble <laughs> so the combo slow. more more reliably. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, you're <laughs> it is true that it is uh, slow, and he does really. Uh, sh he probably should stop picking cards uh, of five or six mana at this yeah. point. Um, but he has arguably the the best possible ones uh, and a great mix. Mm. So he has that uh, he has that locked up. Yeah, I remember that Kudama's read oh. that he was thinking about er in, mm -hmm. the, in the early game. He's like he would have really liked like to have one now. Uh, and now another pack. He's looking at Basking Ritual Conviction as well as a great heroic enabler. Both would be uh, good for his deck. Um, I'm honestly a bit leaning towards the Basking Rudwala just to make sure that uh, you have like these uh, these early creatures. But uh, if you are hitting your curve, then Conviction is easily uh, the, the better one. Uh, works quite well with all these heroic uh, creatures. So uh, that is indeed what, he is, uh, what he's taking. Still needs to make sure that uh, you pick up those early drops at some point. But yeah, I mean, he can, he can put the Conviction on, on a host of things. There's uh, not much. Uh. And when I was talking about early drops, I meant ones that uh, have like <laughs> reasonable power and toughness for their cost. Yeah, the Crier th and Martyr of Sands are not what he is uh, looking for here. Yeah, Crushing Canopy for a Cybers could be good. The uh, Arena yeah. Athlete is great in a heroic deck, mm -hmm. but he's not red. No. The packs are really I not cooperating with, uh, with uh, Mark Tobia here. He picks up uh, the Crushing Canopy. Uh, this pack has not been kind to Mark Tobias, and what we've seen well, when we've seen our new Hushin Bath draft. Oh, Prey Upon, all right. Prey Upon is good. The Prey Upon is good, especially uh, with the Hero of Lane Tower. Oh yes, uh, it's a it's a cheap way to uh, to trigger it, and then you still have uh, a bunch of mana left over mm -hmm. to boost it. Even on a Wingsteed Rider, uh, you pump it and then uh, kill an opposing two two. Excellent card for any heroic strategy. 
All right. So at least some positives here. Shielding Plex 5. Oh, Hyena Umbra. Okay. Both would be uh, good, actually, for, for any heroic uh, deck. Mm -hmm. um, the, the Umbras come with the advantage of uh, protecting your creature, but so does uh, Shielding Plex. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, he does go for the uh, for the Umbra. Mm -hmm. oh, which I'm it's a bit more it's, it's more mana efficient. Actually, when you have uh, specifically Hero of Lena Tower in your deck, you yeah. want cheap ways to target your own creature, so you have mana left over to pump it. So that's why the Umbra is better. There's so many blue cards here. Just the Wind, the Ranged Assistant, and Slate of Hand as well. Uh, all per perfectly serviceable. Fatal's looting in the pack too. Yeah, no well, one seems to, no one seems to be on the red red reanimator plan, which uh, or just red madness, uh, sure. which is surprising. Uh, he's still splashing blue, so I don't think uh, he will be running just the wind in his deck. But, uh, well, might as well take it. Angelic Renewal, Spider Umbra, Turn to Mist, okay. Some uh, middling cards there towards the end. Um, might be leaning towards the Umbra, just as another way to target your own heroic creatures. No, let's go for Angelic Renewal. There are several uh, combos with this uh, card, ranging from comboing with uh, Walker, oh, Walker of the Grove, there it is. <laughs> Uh, but there's also Skyspear uh, Cavalry. Oh, what? Well, more 5 drops. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, both are 5 drops. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I would have liked to see the Walker of the Grove, uh, because if you play it with the Angelic Renewal on the battlefield, mm. uh, it dies and then it comes back. Nice. But, um, well, maybe the Angelic Renewal will end up in the sideboard, whereas the Skyspear Cavalry number 3 might actually end up in the main deck. Right, there's a Miming Slime. Nothing particularly exciting in these last few packs. Hooting Mandrills, a uh, pickup. Not great in Green White Heroic because you do have a tough time of putting cards into your graveyard. So, not not the most efficient card. Yep. Uh, Late Martyr of Sands and Whirlwind Adept. That, that can pick up nice uh, auras, but I think it's too late for uh, it's a bigger red, a bigger blue splash. It's also the, the sixth, fifth, five, uh, five <laughs> yeah. drop. Uh, you do have to be mindful of uh, of your mana curve, even though this is a format uh, where synergy between cards is uh, perhaps even more important than just having an ideal mana curve. Um, <laughs> it's still a factor you have to uh, be mindful of. Yeah, his deck's uh, very interesting. Yeah, so far, uh, I'm, I'm still uh, thinking that he needs uh, these early uh, creatures because he has a lot of uh, five and six mana cards. Mm -hmm. uh, he has a bunch of ways to target his own creatures uh, now, especially after uh, after this booster. He picked up uh, God's Willing, uh, some uh, some Umbras, Conviction, Prey Upon. Sure. But uh, the the creature count in his deck, especially uh, creatures of uh, one, two, or three mana is uh, yeah, dangerously low uh, still. Because just imagine you get like an opening hand with, uh, well, have a five drop creature, two ways to target it, and then uh, four lands. Well, do I keep? Maybe I'm not even going to do anything before turn five. <laughs> these, these are risks with uh, that kind of deck when your curve is too high. Yeah, I mean, it certainly has ways to, like if he gets the creatures and he puts the uh, umbers on them, he certainly mm -hmm. has a very strong plan. But yep. his next pack really has to focus hard on the curve, on those heroic payoffs, because he has enough uh, has enough ways to trigger a, a potential heroic synergies. More Wingsteed Riders would be yes. uh, would be perfect. What else? Um, I mean, there are also great uncommons that he might be able to pick up, uh, like Fiend Hunter. That's never bad. Uh, Phalanx Leader Ooh. or Hero of Iroas, uh, great two mana mm -hmm. heroic creatures. Travel preparations, one of the the better cards, generally speaking, for a green white heroic deck. Right. Um, so, those kinds of uh, cards are always good. But uh, I would mainly be hoping for good early creatures like Wingsteed Rider, other heroic creatures, Kitchen Finks, maybe Wild Mongrel. Um, as long as it uh, comes down before turn uh, turn four, or turn five, I would be happy. All right, last pack for Mark Tobias. Let's see if he can pick up the the rest of the his deck. Maybe mm -hmm. maybe some of the cards you just mentioned. Hopefully the packs will be kind to him. So we would like to see a nice green white heroic deck, but it does seem like the archetype is not fully open at the table. It might just be the cards like op being open, just not cooperating. Uh, Ultimate Masters, the draft can be uh, <laughs> very unkind to you sometimes. Oh yes. Some mana fixing would also be nice uh, to mm -hmm. pick up in this last pack. Yeah. 
Maybe just one Terramorphic Expans, but uh, it would help with uh, the blue splash for the Severance of Lost Alara. Yeah, uh, looking at the draft, uh, you know, Arne Hushmet and Mark Tobias are sitting opposite each other on the other, other side of the table, and we know that Arne Hushmet actually opened a Celestial Colonnade in, in his first pack, mm -hmm. and it didn't get to Mark Tobias at all. So or someone's already pick, probably picking blue-white uh, in front of him, or at least maybe playing three, four colors, something. Yep. You know, and but probably including both blue and white, so maybe that's why he just didn't get to see a lot of a lot from these two colors. I think uh, we also saw uh, an Umbarial right go uh, mm -hmm. go around while uh, while looking through Mark's uh, packs, uh, which didn't get to uh, to Arna, which might mean that there was uh, another player at the table drafting uh, black white reanimator. Mm -hmm. um, and if two people are trying to uh, go for that archetype, it doesn't work out well. On the other hand. Arna did get uh, a very late uh, Miraculous Recovery, so maybe All not. Right. Uh, so, another pack here, pack three. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it goes a little bit too fast here. Yeah, there we go. They're just the right speed for us. So, Hyena Umbra on the top of the pack. But again, it's more Umbras than none of those creatures that we just talked about, Frank. Uh, yep. Well, y <laughs> maybe the third Mammoth Umbra. Uh, but, uh, yeah, at some point you uh, just have too many five drops. Yeah. Hyena Umbra it is. Um, I guess we're just loading up Slippery Bogle with uh, <laughs> a bunch of Umbras. That might be the plan. <laughs> might be a very, very big Bogle. Uh, we'll see. I mean, uh, the I thought he would maybe pick up the Snake, snake Umbra as well because at least it's uh, a little bit of a payoff. Uh, yeah. Forcing your opponent to, to make some blocks. Maybe there's, one. there's, there's another one. There's the Leo, Leo Vold Foil, Verdant Eidolon, Rickerboil, the Kitchen okay. Things. Okay, All that's right. it. Yeah, that's exactly the type of card that, uh, that you want. An early creature and one of the better ones uh, available. Mm -hmm. And Kitchen Things is seeing uh, seeing modern play, just for being all around uh, efficient. Shrugs off removal spells, mm -hmm. keeps Gains you alive life. against uh, aggro decks. Yeah, good, good pickup and something yep. that's good on curve. You know, he can have a two drop into Kitchen Things, something a like wicker bow elder, and just start the beats with uh, then his five drops coming to the party as well. Yep. Uh, well, second pick definitely much better than the first <laughs> pick in this booster. Uh, yeah, uh, some of his first picks have not been impressive. No, the first pick, Hyena Umbra, was not what he was uh, looking for. Maybe it makes his deck, but... Uh, oh. All right, what else do we have here for Mark Tobias? Foil Mahamotijin, uh, Prey Upon, okay. It's, uh, again, a decent payout. <laughs> Where are the creatures? Uh, well, there's a Sky Spear Cavalry, which would be <laughs> number four. Um, the Satyr Wayfinder is fine, though yeah. its body is not particularly yeah. relevant. Prey Upon might still be the, the pickup. I mean, just hope that you uh, find some early creatures, and then it will be uh, will be pretty good, especially with the hero of uh, Lena Tower. Yeah, I would still and probably pick it, but I, uh, it's these packs have just not been kind to Mark Tobias at no. all. Uh, given that he doesn't have any flashback uh, cards or graveyard matter synergies, mm -hmm. uh, the mill ability of Satyr Wayfinder is not something that, that he can really exploit. Mm -hmm. It's still a playable card, just uh, find a land and have a 1 1 creature. Sure. But oh, there we go. Staunch Heart of Warrior, Cathodian, Helios Pilgrim. Oh, man, he's going to be very happy about, th happy about this pick. So many options now. Yeah, I think both Staunch Hearted Warrior and Heliod's Pilgrim are fine. Cathodian could even be. Uh, an option as well, if only because it's just a serviceable body, uh, which is what you need. But the the pilgrim and the warrior synergize way ha more heavily with mm -hmm. uh, what his deck is trying to do. Yep. And uh, given that he already has uh, several four drop creatures in his pool so far, but was lacking early drops, he leaves pilgrim. It is, and it, it, it adds some uh, consistency to his deck. Mm -hmm. You can pick up uh, Mehmet Umbra if uh, you need that one, or alternatively. Hyena Umbra, for example, if you uh, are uh, strapped on mana. There's a <laughs> Become Immense, uh, Spider Umbra, Scuspic Mar Marauders, another 5 drop if he so desires it. Uh, Ether Sniper, in fact, to Vengeful Rebirth going pretty late as well. I don't want any of these cards. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, it goes for Become Immense. I mean, uh, Become Immense is pretty sweet on the, on the double strikers. Yes, yes uh, at least something. So, right, you make it into an 8 8 flying <laughs> double strike, uh, Sky Spear Cavalry, and just swing in for 16. Yeah. But um, again, it's uh, just like a, a late, game, uh, late game card, which he has way too many of already. Uh, I, uh, uh, let's take a quick look at this pack. <laughs> no, no. Groundskeeper yeah. is a creature. <laughs> uh, Conviction. Uh, oh. 
my word, this really has not been going well for Mark Tibet as he's trying to decide between uh, Conviction and Spider Umbra uh, probably maybe the, even the groundskeeper. Well, you know, I, I, uh, I, I laughed at Mark for picking a, a third pick unicorn, a Ronald unicorn in pack one. It's actually like <laughs> one of his saving graces that he actually picked up a two drop. It's going to be the MVP of his deck. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be one uh, unicorn loaded up with uh, five Umbras, a Conviction, and. Uh, uh, and then turning on the prey bonds. Yeah, there's a go-go boar umbra. Okay, that that's an umbra I can get behind. But again, <laughs> it's more um, like li li literally at this point, just bogle it up. I mean, he has I to. I guess uh, ten creatures, uh, well, ten auras. Okay, well, if we're doing that, then God's willing is useless. Bogle already has hex proof, so <laughs> I might as well. Uh, yep, uh, boar umbra it up. You can give it protection so it gets past some blockers. Yep. Like protection from black, swing through your board. Oh yeah, that that that, that is still uh, that's something still relevant. Or something similar. Yeah, yeah I don't. I, I'm just, I'm just trying to figure. Oh, Tatmos High Priest, <laughs> a creature. Oh, yeah, a creature. <laughs> a creature. And actually, like it's going to be real good in his deck. Uh, the, you yes. know, if, if his hero of Lena Tower, his wandering champion, his Ronum Unicorn die, he can at least bring them back. <laughs> Hooray! <laughs> I mean, I mean, he, he surely is very happy about it, this. It, it, it almost doubles his creature count. Just <laughs> picking this one up. I, I mean, like, I think his deck is really good against opposing enchantments because he has those two wicker bow elders. <laughs> yeah. He has a Ronum Unicorn. Like, no Umbras on the other side. Like, in this draft, I'm pretty sure there was like 30 Umbras open. Like, <laughs> so many. Almost every pack had some sort of Umbra. Yeah, take another Umbra. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> um, umbra Tribal. <laughs> Band Enchant. Yeah, I mean, Wild Hunger is decent with those Skyspear Cavalries. Goes for the Snake Umbra here, though. I mean, you know, turn one Bogle, turn two uh, uh, Hyena Umbra, turn three uh, Snake Umbra, go to yep. town. Turn four Boar Umbra, turn five uh, Mammoth, Mammoth, Umbra. Mammoth Umbra, and then uh, did we already have the Hyena Umbra? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he certainly doesn't want to face uh, as any Chainer's Edict, <laughs> let me put it that, <laughs> that way, or Slum Reapers. Oh, there's some creatures here. Uh, uh, Sure, goes oh. for the third Wicurbo Elder. Again, like he's not dying to artifacts or enchantments, that's for sure. No. All right, uh, last couple of cards. Back in apparition, maybe for his sideboards. I'm surprised no one uh, built a Lab Maniac deck. I also wonder how many lands Mark is going to play, right? With so many five uh, mm. mana cards. Yeah, true. Um, probably 18. Wow. Probably, probably going to go for 17 still, but ooh, look at that. The, the Stonge Heart Warrior wield. Uh, not Ding. bad, not bad. Finally, Mark Tobias uh, rewarded for sticking to his guns and uh, displayed the green 4-man uh, 2-2. Two -two. It's a great target for all those Umbras because it just grows yep. by so much. And uh, a, a spider umbra uh, towards the last few cards. Yeah, I don't think I don't think anyone else at this table was drafting uh, green white heroic. Yeah. Uh, like all those uh, heroic creatures and the god willings were coming by pretty late. Yeah. Uh, but other players were just picking up all the early drops. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone was picking the creatures there, but that's sometimes yeah. what happens. I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. You can't really influence. Wing Seed Rider is just good on its own. Uh, even if you have just a few ways to trigger it, it's a it's a three mana two two flyer. It no. can potentially grow, and yeah, this was the Umber draft, it <laughs> seemed like, because when we were looking at Arne Huschenbeth's draft, it didn't really seem like there were that many Umbers, and now uh, when, uh, when you look at what uh, Mark Tobias has been doing, it's been uh, Umber central. Here. Yeah, yeah, now we know why, he was just soaking them all up, uh, Yeah. Uh, yeah. and then you also have Heliod's Pilgrim uh, to search for them, uh, Sovereigns of Lost Alara, so uh, yeah. band and chant it is. Uh, Indeed, and we have one more draft ready for you. It's going to be Pascal Rian, but it's not going to be me and our friend. It's going to be Tim and Ralph bringing that draft. So we'll, you'll see them after these messages. <laughs> 